Hello everyone and welcome to an episode of Game Hunting. I am here at the Truro Comic Con and Gaming Festival and this place was packed. The event took up several different rooms and cosplay was rampant. In fact, Daleks were there and also Batman was there and there was an altercation between them but fear not my friends, due to some kind of bat gadgetry the Daleks weapon was disabled and no one was hurt. But I came here for game hunting and that's immediately where I went. This first vendor I checked out was the collectible toy company and their stand was packed. They had so much retro goodness I was genuinely shocked. I did not expect there to be many gaming vendors at this event, really I thought that the gaming part of the title would just have been tagged on because really we don't get many events at all like this around my neck of the woods and I was shocked. I really didn't expect there to be much of any games here at all and I was blown away by what they had. Now my perception did come back to bite me because I didn't take that much cash with me because I didn't think there'll be anything here and after paying the entrance fee, I wasn't able to grab as much stuff as I would have liked to, but I still picked up a lot of good stuff and had a lot of fun doing it. Here you can see they've got some Master System games, some Mega Drive games at this stand, Golden Axe 2 there, there's no price on it, I probably should have inquired about that because I don't have that game in the box. Down there you can see Sonic in the box, Altered Beast in the box, Yeez, for the Master System in the box. Over here they have a ton of consoles on offer and some boxed controllers which is very cool to see. Here I'm eyeing the boxed cartridge games which are nicely separated from the loose cartridge games and I dig into these and take a look at them. Here I'm looking at X vs Sever 2 Ballistic and that was only £5. Now here I would like to mention that there are some good deals to be found around this event but most of the prices are convention prices which is another reason I didn't pick up a ton of stuff especially the rarer items or the more desirable items are going to be marked up these prices aren't going to be competing with the prices you may see in store and especially at places like car boot sales but there's still good stuff to be found if you look around and look around I did my friends despite many of the items being a little too rich for my blood I was determined not to walk away empty-handed I also think the vendors had already been picked through as I got there quite late in the day but there still was a ton of great stuff to look through myself. Here's an NES game that didn't come out in my region, Mystery Quest. This game looked really cool but it wasn't priced and I got lost in the shuffle and neglected to inquire about the price of it. I wish I'd picked that up. And over here are some more choice games that were pulled out. Some of the rarer games up front like Sukadin 2 here for £120 and on the PlayStation 2 Sukadin 5 for £30 which actually seemed like a pretty good deal. They had lots of great stuff here. Here's Enemy Unknown, a game I don't know much about ironically for £20 from Micropose who make great games. I'm looking through some of the loose cartridges here. They had some cool stuff. I kind of felt like asking about the price of some of these Game Boy and Game Gear cases because I always need more of those. Here I'm digging through loose N64, Super Nintendo and NES games. NES games are actually quite hard to find over here, so it's really cool to get a selection and just dig through it. There's Solar Jetman, which I actually already have in the box, and there's Ghosts and Goblins, which I actually don't have on the Nintendo, believe it or not. I'm taking a good look at Bionic Commando here, but call me crazy, I think £15 for an unboxed NES game is a little too much, but bear in mind, these prices are very reasonable for over here because NES games are a lot less common. There's an uncommon PlayStation 1 game, Vandal Hearts 2, for £60, and it's really good to see such a wide selection of games at this vendor. Talking of a wide selection, let's pick up a Japanese Mega Drive game, Rolling Thunder 2, which I actually already have in the box for the Mega Drive. Now I'm checking out some more loose cartridge European Mega Drive and Master System games as well as some Atari 2600 games including Centipede. Here I move on to boxed Mega Drive games including Shadow of the Beast 2 and I've got to say I really love the packaging on Mega Drive games. The cover art for these games looks really sweet and here is a perfect example with Sword of Sodan. The box art just blows me away, they look fantastic. They remind me a lot of heavy metal CDs and VHS cover art for fantasy and sci-fi films. I really do love these cases. but. 
What did I pick up from the collectible toy company? First up, I grabbed X vs. Sever 2 Ballistic for only £5, which seemed like a great deal for a game in box and Area 51 for the PlayStation 1 for only £4. It's a light gun game, I love light gun games. I previously found it at a charity shop, but it was missing the disc, so I'm really glad to finally pick that up. And here, a Master System led me to our next vendor, which is Martin's Toys. Now, while I'm filming, I'm trying to be as discreet as possible and stay out of the way of customers, but obviously this will make people a little bit nervous if they see me filming. One vendor did ask me what the hell I was doing, but once I explained what I was doing and this was for YouTube, they were perfectly fine with it and they were all right with me filming as long as I gave them a shout out. So I'm very thankful that everyone allowed me to film at their stand. And this stand also had a fantastic selection of products. You can see me here eyeing the Game Boy boxed games, which I approve of the use of box protectors to keep them in great condition, especially during transit. I'm looking at Pokemon Crystal there, which is almost minty fresh, and Breath of Fire there in the box. I actually already have that game, but I don't have it in the box. And now checking out the PlayStation 1 games, I Spy J Cocoon, which is a great game that I love. It's like a mix of Final Fantasy and Pokemon. It's a total hidden gem and I really recommend it. Looking at some boxed Mega Drive games here, we've got Alien 3, Quackshot, and Alien 3 yet again, so many aliens. And there's Chakan, which again has some kind of cool heavy metal cover up. Reminds me of Iron Maiden a lot. And fear not, as I skim past these games, I'm taking a sweep across to show you everything. And then I'll go back to these in a little more detail and pull out some more of the games from the Mega Drive, the Game Boy and the PlayStation. No stone shall go unturned in my search for retro gaming goodness. Here I pull out Illusion of Time for the Super Nintendo, which you may know overseas as Illusion of Gaia. I can't remember if I'm missing the manual for that, but otherwise I have it complete. I know I'm missing the box for Oracle of Seasons, and these games look so much nicer in the box. I was very tempted to ask if they would consider selling me like a manual or a box for games so I could get my copy complete. I really do approve of the use of box protectors, I use them myself, and I really do recommend box protectors, especially for games that are inside cardboard boxes. It protects them from damage, from handling, or from getting crushed during transit. It's a really good idea. Here's a game I tanked on for a little bit, Biohazard Battle. I've been looking for this game in the box for a while, and £20 seemed like a very good price for it. Although I do already have this game on compilation discs because Sega puts out so many different compilations, I would have really liked to have had it on the cartridge in the box. It was in very good condition, so I don't know what I was thinking not picking it up. I really do regret that. Here's Lemmings 2 Tribes, which I originally played on the Amiga back in the day. I love this game, so I did think about picking it up on the Super Nintendo as well. Here's Gun Gauge for the PlayStation 1, which is an uncommon game. Now, I was very spoiled for choice here with uncommon PlayStation 1 games. They had a ton of them, which is really nice to see. So many good games here, including R-Types for the PlayStation 1, which is a compilation of R-Type games. This is another one I tanked on if I wanted to buy or not. Ultimately, I decided I already had these games on different systems, but I would have really liked to have picked it up. There's Legend of Ligaya for the PlayStation 1 there. Pretty rare game, nice to see that. Like I mentioned previously, they had a lot of unusual PlayStation 1 games there. There's Discworld Noir. I already have that game on the PC. It's a very cool adventure game from the mind of Terry Pratchett. And there's Guardians Crusade, a game I don't know anything about, but that looked really cool as well. And I thought about picking that up. Moving on to PS2 and other DVD sized games here, we have Maximo for only £4, which seemed like a really good deal. If I didn't already have that, I would have snagged that up for sure. Here's Res. This game looks really interesting and I don't know much about it, but that's one good thing about going out game hunting. You find a lot of games that you may not know anything about and will probably pick them up in the future. Here's Shadow Hearts. I have other Shadow Heart games, but I don't believe I have that one. And here's Shadow of the Colossus. This game was also ported to the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4, but I'd like to get the PlayStation 2 version because it has that really nice case as well. Here's some Zelda games and Resident Evil 2, some choice GameCube games here mixed among the PlayStation 2 games. Lots of cool games there. There's a Sonic collection. Many Sega collections are out there all over and on different systems, and it's pretty cool to pick them up because they're really good value. Here's Mario Kart Double Dash, which includes the sticker on it with a Zelda bonus disc. I actually took the sticker off my version, which I really regret.
So I pulled out some games from Martin's Toys here that I had my eye on and I was debating between Shadow of Memories over there and Disgaea 2 Cursed Memories with the soundtrack included and Rogue Galaxy. Ultimately I decided to get Rogue Galaxy because this was an RPG I had my eye on for a while and I've seen gameplay of and it looks great so I knew I had to have that. And Shadow of Memories the price was right at £5. It's also known as Shadow of Destiny overseas and it's a really unusual game. Big E's Games and DVDs was also here. As you can see, the stand had a lot of pops there, but they also had video games. You'll see Big E's Games and DVDs a lot in my game hunting videos. They're a local seller that I'm very familiar with and I've got a good relationship with, so I definitely had to have a look at the games they had available. And they had a lot of good stuff. Like I mentioned previously, they were mostly selling toys and pops and things like that, as you saw. They sell most of their games and DVDs on eBay and at their shop in St. Austell, and it is a spoiler I will be at their shop in St. Austell in future game hunting videos so you can look forward to that. They always treat me very well so it pays to be loyal to your local sellers. I really like how a lot of their Super Nintendo games they have in these reproduction boxes. They're very sturdy, a lot more hardy than the cardboard boxes you would get, and it's better than having a loose cartridge, right? I see it that way. Battletoads and Battle Maniacs is a really cool game. Over here we have Total Carnage, and I really do like seeing the games in these boxes. It is something I may consider doing with many of my loose cartridges myself. This seller here, which I didn't catch the name of, had a lot of PC and PS2 games for just £1 each or 15 for £10. And they actually had some pretty good games mixed in, so if you wanted to grab a really good deal or just bulk out your collection, this was a fine way to do that. In the main hall, there was also an area set aside for people to come and play a bunch of consoles that were set up. This was really cool to see. They had stuff ranging from retro to modern systems where people could just come and experience experience them. This place was absolutely packed most of the day but I did manage to get in there at one point and film the systems. It was really nice to see some of the younger gamers get to play the older systems and see their reactions although admittedly many of them were gathered around the Fortnite machines and playing that which is to be expected. Just remember to always let the Wookiee win. As I mentioned previously the event was spread out into many different areas and in one of the other halls I found another gaming vendor. Unfortunately I also neglected to grab the name of this vendor but they had a lot of great stuff including boxed N64 consoles, boxed N64 and Super Nintendo games, and loose cartridge Super Nintendo games, and Sega Mega Drive games as well. Over here they had Zool, which is an old favourite of mine from the Amiga, so I really thought about picking that up. And over here we have some N64 loose cartridges, and Sega Master System boxed games as well. A couple of Pokemon games there for the Game Boy, Perfect Dark there at a perfectly reasonable price. Here we have some more boxed Mega Drive and Master Master System games, including some quite interesting ones. Here I pick out Universal Soldier. The box looks much more like a big box PC case than it does a Genesis or Mega Drive case, which is pretty interesting. Although I do actually prefer the plastic cases of the Mega Drive games than I do any other cardboard case. There's some imports there. I probably should have spent some more time looking through those because there could have been some great games hidden away there. And then I spent a little more time looking through the loose cartridges, but most of them I already had or were just a little too expensive. And now it's time, my friends, to check out my haul and see what exactly I picked up. So what did I pick up? Well, first up from the collectible toy company, I got X vs. Sever Ballistic for the Game Boy Advance. Now this is actually a sequel game, the first game on the Game Boy Advance came out alongside the movie Ballistic X vs Sever and that game actually had its own storyline. This is more based on the movie with the characters there looking a bit more like Lucy Liu and Antonio Banderas. And from what I hear, the first game is actually the better game. They also had that for £6 for a loose cartridge. But being as I had this in box for £5 that I found, I was a lot more happy to pick this up than a loose cartridge for more than that. With that said, this game still looks really cool. It's got the manual in there and, of course, the cartridge, which is loose and rolling around the box because the insert isn't there. But I still think that was a pretty good price for this game. And I'm happy to pick that up. So next up, we have a game I've been looking for, and I'm very happy about this as well. It is Area 50. 51 for the PlayStation 1. I absolutely love light gun shooters. This game looks fantastic. I've been after it for a while. It was a very good price. 
It is complete with the manual and the disc in there. Very happy about that. I've been after this game for a while and it's great to find it. And of course, it is better to pick up this game than it is to attempt to storm Area 51 yourself. That is, unless The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, was truthful about his tweet, in which case stay behind The Rock and you might be alright. And next up from Martin's Toys, I picked up Rogue Galaxy for the PlayStation 2. This is an RPG. Love RPGs and I've been after this game. I have seen some gameplay of it and I've been looking for it. It does look really cool. It is complete with the disc and manual in minty condition so I'm very happy to pick that up. And finally for the PlayStation 2 I have Shadow of Memories also known as Shadow of Destiny overseas. This is a really interesting game, very unusual, pretty happy to find this and it was very cheap as well. This game looks great and pretty unusual to find it. It has the disc and the manual included. The manual for this game was very impressive including information about the characters and things like that. It's really nice to see these kind of things in full colour giving you a lot of detail so that's a really cool addition to that game. And that's it. Those are all of my video game pickups from Game Hunting at the Comic Con and Gaming Fest in Truro. If you like the video please leave a like or a comment to let me know what you think and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. And if you'd like to you can also support me on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you for watching, I've been MVL and I will catch you next time.